I got a bone to pick with all these comic book films that are coming out. You know what the problem with comic book films is? They, they just can't stay loyal to the source material. They can't. They can't. They just can't. They, they just can't fucking do it. They, they don't have the mental or physical capability in their brain to just convert a comic book to a film. So Hollywood decides they're going to make another comic book film. Step one, you got to write a script. So they'll take the comic book, they'll take Spider-Man or whatever, and they'll take it to some hotshot young script writer fresh out of college and they'll say, okay, we got the easiest job for you to do. We just want you to take this comic book, convert it to script format. That's all you got to do. The whole thing's there. All the dialogue's there. The story's there. Everything. The whole thing is laid out for you. So the screenwriter gets the job and he gets all excited and he says, yeah, 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 and I'll, I'll, but it, you know, instead of just doing the script, you know, I'll, I really want to explore the character, explore the innermost workings of him and, and his and motivation. It's like, no, no, innermost workings, no motivation, just, just write the script. Yeah, yeah, and I'll put my own little stamp on it, you know, it's like, no fucking stamp, just do it, just do it. It's the easiest job in the world and you're fucking it up already on day one. It always has to go through the Hollywood machine, you know, what I call the Hollywood machine, which is, you know, you, you take any, you can take anything, it could be a comic book, it could be a book, it could be a television show, and they'll, they'll decide to make a movie out of it, but first it has to go through the Hollywood machine. The Hollywood machine is the most incredible thing ever, because you can put anything in one end, and out the other end comes shit. It's just shit. Anything that goes through the Hollywood machine is shit. You can great, take the greatest masterpiece of art ever. You put it in, you turn the crank, and <laughs> the big pile of shit comes out the other end. Every single time. Can you name one fucking book, one television show, one comic book that they didn't fuck up? They fuck up everything. Every fucking time. The Hollywood machine can fuck up anything. In one end masterpiece, out the other end, <laughs> big pile of shit. Every fucking time. So since we're on a roll, where did the whole comic book film thing start anyway? I think the the whole thing really, really got started with uh, the Superman films with Christopher Reeve in the 70s. And those are pretty good films. They're actually the ones that they changed the least. It was pretty faithful to the comic book and it was nominated for multiple Academy Awards. Hint, hint, Hollywood. My only problem with the Christopher Reeve Superman films is that Gene Hackman played Lex Luthor, which is fine, but he had a full head of hair when Lex Luthor was bald. So why did Gene Hackman have hair? He couldn't just be the bald Lex Luthor? Like, oh, well, you know, Mr. Hackman doesn't want to shave his head. Like, well, tell me he's fucking fired then. Tell him to gather up his golden gloves and get the fuck out of here. Tell him to go film that movie about the basketball coach who takes a bunch of losers and turns them into winners. Like, we haven't seen that movie before. While you're at it, turn the basketball team to a hockey team, throw Emilio Estevez in the motherfucker, and film the movie all over again. No one's going to tell the difference. So, so next up was the Batman films. You know, not the Christopher Nolan ones, but the old Tim Burton, Michael Keaton ones. And this is where the Hollywood shit machine really got on board with the comic book films. You know, you had this big boardroom full of, you know, hotshot bigwig shitheads who, you know, come together and try to throw their own ideas on it. Guys that never read a comic book any day in their life and they want to all put their two cents in. You know, and they're just trying to decide who's going to direct this masterpiece. And they're like, so who should we get? Should we get uh, Lucas, Spielberg, James Cameron? Uh, they're, they're all too busy and too expensive. We're gonna put Tim Burton on the case. Who the fuck is Tim? Wait. The guy who directed Pee-wee's Big Adventure? Yeah, that's the guy. But, alright, fuck it. Tim Burton's the guy. So then they, you know, then they got the costume designs for Batman. Do we got the costume designs for the bat suit? And like, yeah, he's all black. All black? Yeah, all black. Head to toe black. But Batman is gray and blue. No, black. All black. And he's bulletproof. Bulletproof? Yeah, he's bulletproof, like Robocop. Can someone please explain to me why every single comic book film they gotta turn everybody, either they're all black or they turn them into Robocop? Alright, so Tim Burton's out. You already made Batman and uh, Batman Returns. They're working on Batman Forever and they gotta get a new director. Like, who should we get? Should we get Lucas? Spielberg? James Cameron? 
Like, now we're going to put Joel Schumacher on the case. Like, wait. The guy that directed DC Cab? Yeah, yeah, DC Cab. Mr. T drives a taxi cab. And <laughs> hilarity ensues. <laughs> the hell's that got to do with Batman? So Joel Schumacher gets on the case. He shows up to the board meeting. He says, okay, these Tim Burton Batman films, they're just... They're just too dark and dreary. You know, we... I, I want to see some colors. That's great. Great idea. We'll get rid of that black costume and maybe get the, the blue and the gray. No, 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 no. The costume's all black. It's not doing anything rash here. And while we're at it, I want to see some nipples on that suit. And a cod piece. All right, wait, what? All right, yeah, and we're going to put Robin in this film, too. Give him some nipples and a cod piece, too. Whatever, you freako. So, and when Schumacher did his second Batman film, it was even weirder. Batman and Robin. What a piece of shit that was. They get uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger to play Mr. Freeze. Ice to a seal. Let's kick some ice. Anyway, yeah, we'll get the Terminator to play Mr. Freeze. Yeah, and we'll give him a big armored suit and make him look like Robocop. Here's your second Robocop. And they're like, yeah, and I want, I want the nipples and I want a big, bigger cod pieces in this one. And we can put Batgirl in this film. And they're like, great idea. Yeah, and we can put nipples on the Batgirl suit. And Schumacher says, ew. Nipples on a girl? That's gross. Only put the nipples on the men. Let's not do anything weird here. Then they did Spider-Man. The funny thing about Spider-Man is in the comics they actually have the black suit. And I thought for sure when they did the Spider-Man film we were going to see the all black Spider-Man. You know, and then the pictures come out and he's red and blue. Bold move by Hollywood. And I was like, wow, you know, I got my hopes up. This is good. No, bla no all black suit. Until I see the picture of the Green Goblin and he looks like Robocop. Next they did the X-Men movies. All black. Go, we got the costumes back. Everybody's all black. All black. Every, every costume's all black. Then they went back to Batman. The Christopher Nolan Batman films. And they had a clean slate. They're like, okay, we got no ties to those old Batman movies. We can start from scratch and do whatever. Alright, okay, cool. So, you got the... The costume design is back for Batman? Yeah, he's all black. I don't, I don't know how it came that Tim Burton fucked up Batman forever. Batman is all black now, forever, in any film. We can never have a film where Batman's not black. There was never an all black Batman in the comic books, ever. But because Tim Burton decided to make him all black, forever Batman is all black in the movies. He can't be in a movie unless he's all black. Apparently. I don't know where this fucking came from, but that's how it is. And now, of course, you know, they're running out of characters, so they're digging up everybody they can, and, you know, through obscure characters, and they'll say, Hey, let's do an Iron Man movie. Iron Man? What's, what's he like? It's like, yeah, he's just like Robocop. And I know this is slightly off topic, but they finally got the ultimate Hollywood shit machine thing going now because they're making a remake of Robocop, and guess what? He's all black.